our views, your views, and all the news on 3 Magic Talk and online. This is the AM Show. Okay, good morning, New Zealand. This is a special edition of the AM show, keeping you updated with the latest on these horrific terrorist attacks in Christchurch. Amanda, of course, is live for us right throughout the morning in the Garden City. And um, Amanda, uh, good morning to you. Good morning, Duncan. From a heartbroken and shocked city in morning, 50 people dead, many more seriously injured. It is so hard to comprehend, but I'm here at the Botanic Gardens where hundreds of people have brought flowers and notes filled with words of love. The outpouring of love and support here, Duncan, has been remarkable. What about the pain and the grief, the pain you feel, you feel people's pain? Are they, are they coming up to you? Are they talking to you about it? Oh, we were here. We spent a good couple of hours here yesterday and people are distraught. They feel violated like their innocence has been ripped from them, but they are determined to recover from this. They do not want that killer to win. One more thing before we move on is this. Um, Can Christchurch cope with this? I mean, already, of course, the earthquake, just as they peek their sort of heads above the parapet on that one, this comes along. Can they cope with this? I mean, the word resilience often used, I'm not sure it's the right word, but can they deal with another tragedy like this? They are hurting at the moment for sure, but they are so determined. Even throw into that the measles outbreak for the last month or so. They've had so much thrown at them, but they are a very strong city and they will not let this get them down. I forgot about the measles. You you did right. Okay, good stuff, Amanda. We'll come to you during um, the morning. Poignant words. I appreciate it. Um, uh, Mark and Ingrid, uh, good morning to you both. Good morning. Yeah, morning. I haven't got your views yet, Mark, on all this because you went down for the test match, which was cancelled and you were home the same day. Uh, yeah, we, we never really made it out of the airport. Didn't expect to make it out of mm. the airport. I mean, you, you could never expect a, a test match to continue or, or to be started after what happened. So, um, yeah, just turned around and came back home. OK, all right. We um, will keep uh, you up to date on all the developments and, and the latest news from Christchurch. Plus, uh, we're hearing for the first time uh, from the family of the alleged gunman in this terror attack. They say they're gobsmacked. Uh, they even say the shooter deserves the death penalty. Uh, the latest uh, in our news very shortly. Uh, there are calls also for a National Day of Mourning with experts saying this could be a crucial step for maintaining our relationship uh, with the Muslim community across the globe. I like it. Uh, Is this something the New Zealand government will consider? Uh, Plus, we take a look at how some of our laws will handle this unprecedented event. How likely is it that our Prime Minister uh, can change our gun legislation and with the accused gunman set to face justice or a trial in New Zealand, we ask what kind of penalty could our judiciary hand down in such a case? Plus, Amanda uh, will speak to survivors of the attacks and family members of the victims. Um, The Prime Minister joins us at 6.45 this morning and Christchurch Mayor Leanne Dalzell after seven. Very busy morning. Um, thank you so much for joining us. We do appreciate it. Six o'clock, it's news time. Good morning. News from News Hub, New Zealand's number one news source. Kia ora, good morning. The grandmother of the alleged Christchurch shooter has spoken about her shock and disbelief over his arrest. 81-year-old Marie Fitzgerald says the family is devastated that he's been accused of carrying out such a heinous crime. We're all gobsmacked. We don't know what to think. It's, um, you know, the media's saying he's planned it for a long time, so he's obviously not of sound mind, I don't think. Meanwhile, 34 people are still in hospital following Friday afternoon's shooting. News Hub reporter Erin Speedy is outside Christchurch Hospital with the latest, Erin. That's right, 34 people remain in hospital today. Now 12 of those are in a critical condition and a small number of those patients are expected to be transferred to other wards today. Now. A four-year-old girl is also in a critical condition in Starship Hospital in Auckland and 38 surgeries here in Christchurch have been postponed to allow those victims of the massacre to be prioritised. More than 11,000 people attended the Wellington vigil last night. They came with flowers and hearts heavy with grief. The service was moved to the Basin Reserve over concerns that the original venue at Tengaku Civic Square wasn't big enough. Selena Upati attended and was amazed by how many people showed up. No matter what colour we are, what, where we come from, we all gather together and yeah, this is um, quite a sad, very sad moment for, for our country. And Canterbury's Charity Hospital is offering free counselling. Co-founder Dr Phil Bagshaw says it will help people process their emotions a lot quicker. 
We saw that after the earthquakes. I'm sure we're going to see it again. And that the sooner you get counselling, the better. And there is no stigma attached to that. And there is a disgust at the reaction of some gun enthusiasts to news the government wants to change laws on semi-automatic weapons. Gun shop owners are reporting that they are flat out selling weapons in anticipation of a potential clampdown. Firearms safety specialist Nicole McKee says that's not what we're about. Be respectful of our whole countrymen and you know, stop being so heartless. New Zealand's largest gun shop, Gun City, has been approached for comment, but the owner doesn't want to comment until he's spoken with police. The US ambassador to New Zealand has rubbish claims that his boss is a symbol of white identity. The US president was referenced in a manifesto sent out moments before Friday's massacre. Scott Brown says anything the alleged shooter is claiming should be taken with a grain of salt. Yeah, I don't give any, any credibility whatsoever to the ramblings of somebody who's rotten to the core. I hope as quickly as possible they can find a way to get this, kid con this guy convicted and lock, uh, lock him up and throw away the key. Dunedin Airport has reopened this morning after a hoax object was found on the airfield. The terminal was shut last night after reports of a suspicious package just after 8 o'clock. The Defence Force bomb squad was called in and neutralised the object. Police are investigating who might have left the item. That is the latest from News Hub. It is three minutes past six. OK, thanks so much, Ingrid. Good morning to you. I do appreciate you joining the programme this morning. We're a nation uh, in mourning. There's no doubt about that. We are a, a nation hurting. Uh, we are a nation still in shock. We are a nation, I think it's fair to say, on edge. This morning I was driving to work when I drove um, deliberately past our, our local mosque where cops were there with some serious guns. They were standing guard. I slowed down to take a look. And the police noticed that I'd slowed down. They shifted their stance and they pointed their guns at my car, at me. This is the New Zealand that we're now living in, a New Zealand where kids are asking questions about what happened and why, and parents are trying to explain the inexplicable, really, um, and the unexplainable. A New Zealand where our Kiwi Muslims are thinking twice about whether to attend prayers at the local mosque, that's unheard of. A New Zealand where strangers are now embracing strangers, crying in their arms. A New Zealand that's coming together in a way that we never have before. Muslims and, and sheiks and Christians and Seventh-day Adventists, atheists and the agnostic like myself. Um, terrorism has no religion at all. It belongs only to the fools. It's a New Zealand where men, women and children have been indiscriminately shot dead in a hate-filled attack, the likes of which we thought we would never see here, terror in our backyard, our country. Don't you keep waking up thinking this was all just a dream? Um, it is six minutes past six. Good morning to you, Mark. Sport. The Wellington Phoenix took another stride towards the A-League playoffs with a 3-1 victory over the Western City Wanderers in the capital last night. But another winning result was the last thing on the minds of the players and coach Mark Rudin, given the atrocities in Christchurch on Friday. Great country, this place. It's opened its arms and doors to so many different people, so many different races and religions and... Uh, you got a fantastic prime minister, by the way, as well. It's just, it's just sad. This country doesn't deserve it. Liverpool's held their nerve to move back to the top of football's Premier League. The Reds looked on course for a comfortable win against Fulham at Craven Cottage before the home side levels the scores in the second half. But a late winner from James Milner gave them a 2-1 win. Manchester City are now two points back in second with a game in hand. A familiar start to the Formula One season in Melbourne as Mercedes secured a 1-2 finish. Lewis Hamilton started on pole, but it was teammate Valtteri Bottas who dominated, finishing 20 seconds clear. It was definitely my best race ever. Uh, I don't know what happened. I just felt so good and everything was under control and the car was so, so good today. The green machine were too slick in the wet in the NRL on the Gold Coast last night. The Canberra Raiders ran in three tries to none and a 21-0 win over the Titans. Last year's wooden spoon as the Parramatta Eels got a victory in Penrith, beating the Panthers 20 points to 12. That's what. Good stuff, thanks, Mark. Um, I'd just like to also mention the New Zealand police. What a, what a fantastic job they, I think, they've done. And also the arrest. Uh, the footage is up around um, the arrest as well. A brave arrest. Had the police not arrested um, this man... Uh, 
this alleged criminal, uh, he may have gone on to, to shoot and kill more people. So to those police officers who come fresh from a training um, uh, training group, actually, training uh, in trying to get um, offenders, actually, to training in getting offenders, uh, well done to them. I know they don't want to be seen as heroes, and one of them, I think one's on leave and one's gone on, um, one's on having a holiday and one's um, taking leave. So I know you don't want to be regarded as heroes. You may well talk about it one day, show your face, but uh, from us here on the AM show, well done. Good policing. Uh, it is eight minutes past six. Um, Ingrid. Morning and evening cloud for the south of the country, but sunny throughout the day. Dunedin 20 degrees and Queenstown 23. Morning cloud turning to a fine day with light winds for the west coast. A high of 21 degrees for Greymouth and for Hawkatika. It's a similar story for Canterbury and Marlborough. Morning and evening cloud with some afternoon fine breaks. Christchurch hitting 21 degrees and 22 for Nelson. And a sunny day with light freezes for the lower North Island, Wellington 21 and a warm 25 degrees up in Palmerston North. A mainly cloudy day for the central plateau with a chance of showers in the afternoon or evening, Whanganui 24 and 23 the high in Taipo. Cloud and rain in the morning turning to a fine afternoon on the east coast, some light winds and sea breezes, 22 degrees is the high for Napier and in Tauranga. Cloud breaking to sunny spells in the morning for the top of the country, there is the chance of some showers in the afternoon and evening. Warm though, Hamilton hitting 24 degrees and Kaitaia 26. OK, thanks so, so much, Good Nine past um, six. Uh, let's head back to Amanda in Christchurch now. Um, Amanda, we got you there. You do, Duncan. And Sir Bob Parker, the former mayor of Christchurch, has described this massacre as evil, horrifying and disgusting and he was actually caught up in the incident on Friday afternoon and he joins me now. So Bob, how are you coping and how is the city coping? Well, we're fine but you know, the city is definitely, there's an element of uh, the city that's very on edge still. We had chopper over the town on Saturday night and police sirens and there's a lot of unease about that. But there's that uncertainty, that, that feeling in the, in the gut. But there's a cross section of different views but most people just feel really sad that what has happened here uh, ha took place, that some people in our community, part of our community, were brutally, savagely cut down. The impact of that and the response of the city to that has been overwhelming support, strength, love, caring, whatever it is, same right across the country. Uh, so in essence is moving into a stage now where there's a lot of emotion uh, there's some anger for sure that this has happened but I think you know uh, as time goes by uh, the anger subsides the compassion takes over and we've seen that in Christchurch I mean that's one thing this city knows sadly is that we know how to confront these things and you confront it by reaching out to each other everybody reaches out to another person in their community and in this case for our Muslim community people are wrapping their arms around them and you would have seen that coverage on your own network you know it's incredible